My main motivation um, is to understand how the universe came to be um, as it is. And uh, that's a long story, of course, and we've learned um, a big part of this story already, but it's incomplete. The story is incomplete as long as we don't know um, how quantum gravity works, what's the quantum properties of space and time. And that's what I want to know. My main driving force is curiosity about the fundamental uh, uh, laws of nature and uh, how the universe is uh, sort of put together at the smallest level and then and, and sort of yeah, what, what, what makes it tick. The thing is that normally in our theory space and time uh, is kind of the background in which everything else involves but we know that this background also must have quantum properties like everything else and how that works we don't know. And the theories that we presently have um, are incomplete, we know that they are incomplete and we need a theory for the quantum behavior of space and time to understand what happens in the early universe, what happens inside black holes. My main interest in black holes is because I find them very useful. Uh, for a theorist, a uh, black hole is useful uh, in at least two ways. Uh, you can use them sort of to provide stress tests for your theories, that is, uh, they are an extreme environment where your equations are being really put to the test and in particular there is a set of uh, thought experiments involving black holes which involve the creation and the uh, subsequent evaporation of a black hole in a theory which involves both gravity therefore and uh, quantum mechanics uh, which uh, we hope will teach us something about the ultimate structure of, of the quantum theory of gravity, which is the theory that we have been searching for for a long time. And, and uh, there aren't many systems where you really expect gravitational effects and quantum effects to be simultaneously important, but black holes, remarkably enough, are, are one of them. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts the existence of black holes that trap all light and matter inside a surface known as the event horizon. Combining quantum theory with general relativity, one finds that black holes emit thermal radiation, which carries away some of their energy so that they actually evaporate. In the words of Stephen Hawking, who first discovered this effect in the 1970s, black holes ain't so black. The complete evaporation of a black hole is one of the most famous thought experiments in theoretical physics. If a black hole completely evaporates, all that is left is thermal radiation, which carries no information about the matter that collapsed to form the black hole. This evaporation process is irreversible, and in this case a black hole destroys information about everything that falls through the event horizon. In quantum theory, however, such an irreversible process is impossible. So by considering quantum effects in the context of Einstein's general relativity, we find a result which is incompatible with quantum theory itself. This puzzling inconsistency is known as the black hole information paradox. To solve the problem, we need a new theory that correctly describes quantum effects of space-time. Such a theory, referred to as quantum gravity, has proven very difficult to construct, and theoretical physicists hope that the black hole information paradox can provide clues as to how to proceed. Black holes are important in this because um, if you think about what happens to a black hole as it gets older, um, it reveals an inconsistency between our treatment of space and time as we presently have it in the classical theory of uh, gravity and quantum mechanics. Um, it just doesn't work together. And that's why people are thinking about black holes so much because um, um, they are poking around on this paradox in the hope that they will find out how to solve it. Many potential resolutions of the paradox have been suggested, but so far none of them have been entirely convincing. One of the most successful, called black hole complementarity, was proposed 20 years ago. In this proposal, information is carried by infalling matter into the black hole, but the information is also returned to outside observers in subtle correlations in the Hawking radiation. Normally, quantum theory does not permit information to be copied, 
but the black hole horizon separated the two copies and so they cannot be compared. Black hole complementarity is a conservative proposal from the point of view of quantum theory, but a radical one in that it requires giving up the notion of locality in space-time, which is central to Einstein's general relativity. Recently, black hole complementarity has been challenged by researchers who claim that if information is carried out in the Hawking radiation, it cannot also be carried into the black hole. If this is the case, then the event horizon of the black hole would in effect be replaced by a firewall that burns all infalling observers. While this respects locality, it appears to violate the equivalence principle, another basic tenet of general relativity. This has stirred up a lot of discussion because resolving the black hole information loss problem is believed to be a major milestone on the way to quantum gravity. Mainly it is useful in that it gains us uh, understanding of the basic underlying theory and then who knows wh where that will lead us in, in, in the longer run. When we come to understand the quantum behavior of space and time it will teach us something about quantum theory in general and that will be important also to our understanding of um, other interactions and other matter and also to our ability to manipulate them. I came to know data primarily to sort of lead the institute as, 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 the, uh, as the director. But what I found, and, and uh, actually to my, uh, as a pleasant surprise, I found that it also, despite having a considerable administrative uh, workload, uh, I found that my research has, has really flourished here as well. And this is because it is a, a very active environment. There are a lot of very bright young people who pass through here. We get a lot of visitors who are uh, experts in my area and I'm finding all of these uh, sort of have contributed greatly to the, to the research that I've been doing in recent years. I have uh, two small children um, and uh, people at uh, Nordita here have been very supportive and flexible in um, addressing my childcare problems. Um, so the North Europeans have certainly lived up to their family-friendly reputation. <laughs>